Thank you very much, Mr. Saba. Uh, let's go ahead and get started then. Uh, good morning, everybody. I'm pleased to welcome you back to the meeting of the California Privacy Protection Agency Board for October 28th and 29th, 2022. It's October 29th at 9 a.m. exactly, and we are returning from recess um, from yesterday. My name is Jennifer Urban. I'm the chairperson of the board for the agency, um, and um, we will now continue on um, with the meeting from yesterday. Before we get started with the substance of our discussion and public comment, I do want to remind everyone of some logistical and um, legal parameters for the meeting. First, I'd like everyone to please check that your microphone is muted when you're not speaking. Second, this meeting is being recorded. Uh, today's meeting will be open, run according to the Bagley Keene Open Meeting Act as required by law. Uh, we will have opportunity for questions and discussion from board members. Uh, there will be the opportunity for public comment um, on any agenda item uh, uh, as well, and each speaker will be limited to three minutes per agenda item. When we get to public comment, um, uh, Mr. Sabo will um, instruct, he is our moderator for today, and he will instruct you um, as to how to participate, but I'll give a brief overview now. If you wish to speak on an item and you're on the Zoom webinar, please use the raise your hand function located at the bottom of your screen. If you wish to speak and you're joining by phone, please press star nine on your phone. Mr. Sabo will call your name when it is your turn and will un and request that you unmute. Um, which you can do with the unmute function on Zoom and star six on your phone. You will then have three minutes, and when your comment is completed, the moderator will mute you again. One important note, um, it's helpful if you identify yourself, but this is entirely voluntary. You can put in a, a pseudonym when you log into the Zoom meeting. Um, we do welcome public comment, uh, and do um, want to, I do want to let everyone know uh, that if we uh, seem unresponsive, it's simply because um, it, we are limited in our ability to respond in the meeting, but we are listening and we do appreciate um, public comment. We will take breaks as needed. Um, and um, with that, I would like to thank the team supporting us today. Mr. Philip Laird, the agency's general counsel, Mr. Ashkan Sultani, who's our executive director, Mr. Kevin Sabo, who's um, uh, acting as our moderator, and all the staff um, uh, behind the scenes um, at, at our agency and at other agencies um, around the state, especially the Office of the Attorney General. I'd like to thank everybody especially um, for supporting us um, in a, in a two-day meeting and a meeting that um, runs on a Saturday, um, and to all the public um, for joining us today. With that, um, I would like to ask Mr. Sabo um, to conduct the roll call. Board Member De La Torre. Present. De La Torre present, Board Member Lay. Present. Lay present, Board Member McTaggart. Here. McTaggart present, Board Member Thompson. Here. Thompson present, Chair Urban. Present. Urban present. With that, Madam Chair, you have established quorum with all members present. Thank you very much, Mr. Sabo. The board has established a quorum. Um, and as a reminder, um, I would like to let the board members know we'll take a roll call vote on any action items. With that, let's return to um, agenda, our discussion of agenda item number three, um, which is where we are on the agenda. Um, for everyone following along, you can check your notice and agenda for that. The agenda item uh, is discussion and possible action regarding proposed regulations, section 7000 to 7304, to implement, interpret, and make specific the California Consumer Privacy Act of 2018, as amended by the California Privacy Rights Act of 2020, including possible adoption or modification of the text. Now, I'd like to remind everyone of where we are today and what we are discussing what is the decision um, that we are um, that we are discussing? Um, we are um, considering the decision to approve the staffs and from yesterday boards recommended modifications to the proposed regulations um, for um, additional public comment of fifteen days. We uh, will not and cannot adopt final regulations in this meeting, um, but we are considering 
um, whether and in what form to send the proposed regulations out um, for further formal public comment. That is where we are um, in, the, um, in the process. I'm happy to say more um, if anyone um, would like further information, but we went over it in some detail yesterday. Um, and with that, and with my thanks, um, I would like to turn it over to Ms. Lisa Kim, um, who I believe has a summary for us of the results of our discussion yesterday. Thank you, Chairperson Urban. Um, so here is what I understand to be the direction of the board to the staff with regard to this rulemaking package. First, we will include the proposed modifications that were set forth in the materials provided to the board for this two-day meeting, but with some modifications as uh, specifically, um, the modifications we understand from our discussion yesterday is that the board directs staff to consider the following guidance provided by the board um, and to use staff's discretion to include the following items if feasible at this time. And that would be with regard to section 7002, um, specifically that we would consider uh, some language to cl clarify that the consumer's expe expectation is only for particular purposes um, with regard to the examples that were used, that we would consider removal of the word factors, that we would consider adding language within 7002 before about the straightforwardness and ease of understanding of the disclosures, and that we would also consider whether for further clarification of the term consumer is necessary. With regard to section 7D25, we would include uh, use our discretion to include language that clarifies that the opt-out preference signal should apply to pseudonymous profiles or specifically consumer profiles associated with the browser or device. We would also consider inclusion of language to clarify that if a business asks and the consumer does not affirm their intent to withdraw from the financial incentive program, the business may ignore the opt-out preference signal. And we, don't, we will also um, consider including language to clarify that if a business does not ask when the opt-out preference signal conflicts with the financial incentive program, the business should then still apply the opt-out preference signal to um, the browser or device and to the extent known um, the consumer. Um, with regard to 7D27 subsection M, we will include the reference to civil code section 1798-121A. We will also have discretion to include language stating that the use and disclosure of the sensitive personal information has to be reasonably necessary and proportionate to achieve the purposes listed. And that we will also consider removal of the term collect in the preamble and instead move it over to subsection M8. There are also additional modifications that we discussed during the Friday meeting about the following sections that we will um, be including um, in the rulemaking package. And just for to have this all in one place, um, I'm going to list off those subsections. 7001 subsection B, 7001 subsection GG, 7002A, 7002A1, 7002A2, 7002 subsection D, 7004 subsection A2, sub 7004 subsection C, 7011 subsection D, 7012 subsection G3A, 7022 subsection B2, 7023 subsection D1, 7026 subsection A1, 7027, subsection B1, 7028, subsection A, 7050, subsection A, sub 7050, subsection E, 7050, subsection G, and 7051, subsection A3. Now, sep separately, there were a number, number of items that the board has identified and recommended staff consider for a future rulemaking package. I will not summarize them here because they are in the transcript, but for those items, I understand that staff will review, analyze, and consider them for a future rulemaking package.
Uh, I have prepared some language for a motion, but um, should I go ahead and state that uh, or? Um, that would be helpful, I think. Um, thank you for the not sure. very careful, um, very careful summary. Sure. Um, what I pro propose as a motion is that the board directs staff to take all steps necessary to prepare and notice modifications to the text of the proposed regulatory amendments for an additional 15 day comment period. The modification shall reflect the changes proposed by staff in the written meeting materials, except staff shall further modify the text in accordance with my summary that I just provided and to reflect any other change that the board, any other changes that the board explicitly directed staff to include during yesterday's discussion of the proposed modifications. Thank you. Um, I just wanna make sure I have the components. That sounds right to me. Um, uh, and I think after extensive discussion yesterday, we are ready um, uh, to, um, to put that motion on the table. But first um, I would like to call on Ms. De La Torre. I just want to know, are we going to vote before we listen to the comments? Oh, no. No, okay. I should back up. Um, I mean, I think Ms. Kim was suggesting um, a, a form of a motion. Um, so I will um, put the motion on the table so we all have it in front of us. Then we will, and the public has it in front of them. Then we will take public comment. We absolutely will not vote on anything before public comment. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, yes, Mr. Thompson. Sorry, just to clarify what putting the motion on the table means, it, it will be circulated in writing? Oh, no, I mean, I will I will request a motion um, that is along the lines of Ms. Kim's, but I, I will I will state the motion, request the motion. Um, but we can do that part after public comment. I just want to state what I think the motion is going to be so everybody has it in front of them when they're, or is, has heard it when they're talking. Okay. If it's possible, the, the motion is, significant, is is sufficiently lengthy and detailed that it would be helpful to have it in writing prior to voting on it. I was jotting down what Ms. Kim was saying, um, but there's a, there's a lot there. Okay, um, Mr. Laird, um, what? Uh, let me let me take Mr. Lay's comment or question first, and then ask what is the best way. I mean, I'm happy to include all of those items. Every one of them was discussed yesterday. They were. Mm -hmm. In the transcript and we have a record of it um but um uh, i'm also happy to um to do something like put something up on the screen if that's helpful and if it's appropriate all right mr lay yeah i um i don't know if this is appropriate but i actually you know last night i, I came up with one more item that i would like staff to okay <laughs> and maybe for for the board to discuss um but i don't know what the right time to do that is so uh okay yeah. Um, hold the thought. Um, my thinking is it's probably a good idea um, to do it now. Um, so again, like we and the public have everything in front of us. Um, Mr. McTaggart. Uh, thank you. Good morning. Um, just along the lines of what Mr. Thompson was saying, I, I guess my understanding was that we weren't going to go like, were, were we going to actually list all of what you <clears throat> just said, Ms. Kim, or were we just going to say, you know, please proceed because this isn't a final vote on the regulations and will everybody, I guess, we'll get a chance to see the final regulations as well. Yeah, yes. Right. So <laughs> maybe the better approach, um, just for clarity's sake, Ms. Kim, would have been for me to take what you said and um, and state, um, a state a motion that was basically what you said. Um, uh, it incorporates the list that Ms. Kim gave us, which I think was, a, was very helpful um, and um, made sure that it clarified different buckets of things uh, that we talked about and direction that we're giving to the staff. So staff proposed um, uh, some modifications. Most of those were in the written document we all reviewed. Staff proposed some additional uh, modifications yesterday in the meeting. That was the list of sections. Board members um, proposed a mix of potential modifications um, that um, I think where we ended up yesterday is that, um, Everyone agreed um, that staff, we would give staff discretion um, to put those in this package for the 15 day comment period or not once they had a chance to see how everything worked together. Um, and then there was a, a final um, fairly um, large bucket of items um, that are things that would require more interpretation analysis, um, research work and so forth um, that um, we have given staff 
um, or we want to give staff direction to research and look into um, for a potential future rulemaking. Uh, Mr. Lay um, uh, has one more item that occurred to him, so we will we will get to that. Um, but that is how I understood um, uh, Ms. Kim's summary together with the motion to work. Does that make sense, Mr. McTaggart? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, I think my point is we we ha eventually have to vote on a final package, right? That's correct, but not yeah. at this point. We are taking we will take more public comment on the modifications before we right. Vote. So we're just we're kind of telling staff go ahead with all that things. I mean, I, I'm sensitive to what Mr. Thompson was saying about, did I miss, you know, 7051A, you know, did I get all the changes that Ms. Kim was talking about? And I guess my, from my perspective, I'll have another chance to take a look at that and approve it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you, Mr. McTaggart. Um, Ms. De La Torre? Um, I just was going to suggest, I mean, there is a value for us to have that um, motion written, but I think fundamentally there is a value for his staff because then they will have clarity after this meeting and they have something that they can go back to. So even though it might be, um, you know, maybe really detailed, I think that having it in writing and voting on it in a concrete way will put the staff in the best position to then go back and remember to implement the, um, the feedback that they have received. And I will suggest that we hold back on putting it in writing until after we listen to the comments just in case um, you know any of us can um, be um, made aware of things that we were not considering until this point based on the comments that we're going to receive. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Delatore. I have that that is completely fine with me. I will just say that the legal effect is the same and staff have everything that that um, Ms. Kim listed out. Um, and yes, of course, we we won't we won't vote until after public comment and we could discuss more after public comment if we need to. It's so that everyone knows what it is that we are considering voting on. Um, Ms. Ma, Mr. Lay, did you do you want to um yes. Um, yeah, so I um was looking over the comments again and I I saw quite a few around, you know, Clarifying, you know, businesses worried around how much time they have to comply before the the July deadline. So, um, you know, I wanted to bring up for discussion to the board if if we we should consider having staff put in some language uh, stating that you know the agency can consider how much time businesses have had to comply with the regulations and, and enforcement. Um, yeah, so just wanted to discuss that point with the the rest of you all. Oh, thank you very much, um, Mr. Lay. Um, and I, um, that was an item I was thinking about and I didn't bring up at the end of the day yesterday uh, when I said I didn't have anything in the back of my mind. I thought, do I? I feel like I have something. So so thank you very much for bringing that up. Um, Ms. Kim, uh, do you have uh, uh, thoughts or feedback from staff on this? Sure. Um, we did receive many comments, comments on this item or this idea of delaying the effective date or in the or the enforcement date. Um, I wanted to note that we are bound by the statute with regard to effective date and the enforcement date. Um, and um, I do have personally some concerns about delaying implementation of, of the actual regulations because you know old provisions are tied to new provisions and currently um, existing CCPA obligations may be hampered. And I don't believe that to be the intention of the statute. But that being said, um, I suggest, I, I do believe that we could um, add a regulation that clearly states that the agency may consider the amount of time be between the effective date of the statutory or regulatory requirement and, and the possible violations of the requirements. Um, and also possibly uh, the good faith efforts to comply with the requirements. Um, that's something that I think would make some sense to include as a regulation. Thank you, Ms. Kim. Mr. Lay, did you want to respond to that before? Yeah, I, I think that sounds great. Yeah, I definitely don't want to suggest that, you know, existing portions of the law, you know, suddenly become unenforceable, um, which isn't really what my, you know, the, the language I have is essentially what Ms. Kim suggested, right? So if, if this new regulation comes out, um, you know, and then one month later, we bring an action that's, you know, that you can consider whether or not they've had enough time to, to make those updates. So 
Um, that that's that sounds perfectly fine, Ms. Kim. Thank you, Mr. Lay. Ms. De La Torre, then Mr. McTaggart. Um, yes, I have two questions, um, and thank you, Mr. Lay, for bringing this topic up. One is if we were to include any uh, modification like the one we are discussing right now in the rules, will that modification have any effect on the Attorney General? Because we have two enforcers for the law, and I just want to have clarity as to what that uh, will mean. And, and the other idea that I thought um, might be worth considering in, in this space is whether it could make sense to temporarily extend the cure period that currently exists and is going to expire when CPRA goes into effect for particular topics, not across the board, but for the new topics, I think specifically um, uh, HR data uh, and uh, um, business to business data, there's um, there is confusion. I think in terms of implementation that has come through the um, through the comments, and there is limited time to implement. Perhaps giving for that narrow area an extension of the cure period for six months or nine months would be a good gesture on our side to just. Um, uh, present ourselves as a reasonable enforcer. Thank you, Ms. Delatory. Mr. McTaggart? Thank you. Um, you know, uh, I'm, I'm sensitive to, to, to the concern, and I think it's, it's a reasonable concern. The, the flip side is I, I get nervous um, if, I, if I hear us sort of kind of what Ms. Kim was talking about, you know, sort of trying to reinterpret a statute, which has some pretty fixed deadlines in here. And what I guess my suggestion would be, this is a complicated area, uh, would be uh, for, to ask staff to come back. Um, and I'm not sure, I don't think Mr. Lay was saying he needed it today, but to come back with it with a future regulation to, because we do have language in 145, what's it? It's uh, uh, 199.45 about, uh, the staff's, uh, the, the, the agency's ability to sort of prosecute differentially based on the lack of intent to violate the statute. And so I feel like there's there's solid ground there if staff, if we ask staff go go away and come up with some language around that sort of lack of intent, you're, you're making good effort, you're trying. It wasn't just the business just ignored it, you know, but they actually were trying. Um, and that would be on safer ground than if we start to kind of say, well, we're going to have this part here, we're going to enforce, or we're going to extend a, a, a cure period here. Just Mr. Delatore, I feel like that's, that thing gets, opens you up like, well, if you can do that, why didn't you do this? And it, it, it gets a little complicated. So I, I would, I don't know, I feel like um, we're, we should ask uh, Ms. Kim, you know, the experts here to sort of look at this from a, what have other agencies done in these situations? I, I like, I don't mind the idea, uh, of going, you know, easily for the first little while, but I, but I, but I get worried about um, the prospect of, a, of, a, of too much reinterpretation. Thank you, Mr. McTaggart. And of course, we we are bound by the statute, which was um, part of Ms. Kim's point. We can't extend the um, the enforcement um, the enforcement dates in the statute. The way I understand um, this. Um, the way I understand this issue, uh, and the way that I uh, that I that I analyze this issue, is that I think the business um, uh, community um, have valid concerns, um, and in my view, it's very reasonable um, to um, try to help the business community have some expectation or sense of how the agency generally will approach um, approach the issue. We are unlike federal agencies and, and, and some other agencies and that we are limited um, in our ability to issue some sort of guidance um, without doing it through the regulatory process. We can, of course, point to our discretion, which we have, as Mr. McTiger pointed out, and that's all very important um, for people in the regulated community to understand that that, that, that is there. Um, but I would certainly support saying something in the regulation that makes clear as Ms. Kim was suggesting, um, that we can take into account um, these things um, when we um, 
when we are looking at enforcement. That seems to me to be um, a reasonable approach that helps the regulated community um, have a sense of how we're looking at it. I don't think that it, I mean, it, it doesn't, of course, go beyond our, our statute, um, but I, I, my understanding was that the regulated community were really looking um, for the agency to say, we've heard this concern um, and we understand it. Um, and we intend um, to um, we intend to um, uh, to um, you know pay attention to to it um, as, as we move forward. And while you know I have been able to say I hear you, um, I can't say what the agent's going to do. And also um, we have um, we have the um, we have the strictures of California law, which are really important, um, that things need to go through the uh, public comment um, process and receive a lot of public input um, before we um, we move forward. Um, and that's often, I think, not intuitive to folks. So I would certainly support something like this. I also support Mr. McTaggart's approach. Um, uh, uh, at, you know, if that's if that's where the 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 sense of the board is. Um, uh, and I just appreciate Mr. Lay bringing it up. Okay, Mr. Lay and then Mr. Thompson. Yeah, I, I, you, you took a lot of the words out of my mouth. I'll note that um, to Mr. McTaggart, we, we've brought this up with staff uh, at a previous board meeting as, as an agenda item. So staff has had some time to think about um, the best way to approach this. And, and yeah, not in a way that would extend um, or, or you know change the statute, but just like as... as uh, Chair Urban noted, gives businesses a little bit more guidance in terms of what the agency can consider before bringing an action. Um, and I, I would like to see this in the, the, the next uh, draft of the comments, just so that when the regs come out, this would be with that. Uh, so, so all the attorneys at you know, all of these firms are have a little bit more um assurance that you know a month after the regs come out like you know they won't uh you know the, the maybe they'll, they'll have some time to to cure and fix things um potentially you know and the agency can at least consider that as before they bring in enforcement action or fines thank you mr lay mr thompson <laughs> I just wanted to uh, thank Mr. Lay also for bringing this up. Uh, this has been a, a recurring theme of both public comment and board discussion. Uh, it, and it is, I think it's an important point that as we're proceeding through this regulatory process that we recognize timelines and, and what are reasonable timelines for implementation and, and for the regulated community to respond. Um, I agree with the point that Mr. Lay made about the timing that I would not want to see this. We will have a revision and a, and a subsequent public comment period. I wouldn't want this one issue to trigger a, another public comment period that it should be, if at all possible, addressed in the revision that is coming out. I think that was Mr. Lay's point, and I would I would agree with that. Um, and hearing the, the discussion, I actually I think Mr. McTaggart raises a good statutory tie that the, the language as proposed or the, the concept as proposed by Mr. Lay could reference that uh, discretion that exists in the statute and then that perhaps would give it a firmer grounding um, if it if it referenced that section. Uh, but I want to, I'm glad Mr. Lay brought this up and I, I think we, we should act on it. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Ms. Kim, um, for my benefit, I, I apologize. Um, everything you said made a lot of sense to me, but um, I just wanted to be sure that I understood um, if staff had sort of a recommended modification um, at this point, so we all know what we're talking about. Yes, um, my rec our recommendation with regard to the regulation is one that clearly states that the agency may consider the amount of time between the effective date of the statutory or regulatory requirement and the uh, linkage to the, uh, the alleged violation of the requirements. 
as well as the good faith efforts to comply with those requirements. I do think that the agency has discretion, but to the extent that um, putting that discretion or, you know, noting that the discretion includes these elements may be helpful in addressing these concerns. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kim. Um, that seems a very sensible approach to me. Um, Mr. McTaggart? Yeah, and this is going to be uh, uh, somewhat of a dumb question, but I uh, then that's self limits, you know. So, like, I guess, Miss Kim, the question, you know, you don't want four years in someone saying, well, you know. So, I guess you, the language would have to sort of. Um, I I think the idea is that if there are iterative or if there are future rulemaking packages, it may apply to those as well. But the longer you go out from the date in which the uh, statutory or regulatory requirement is put into law and compliance that's considered. Ms. De La Torre? Oh, sorry, Ms. Mr. McTaggart had a... No, sorry. Did I read I was, your expression correctly? <laughs> I, I think I was, I was, I was, I was being, so let, let me, let me shut up here and I'll, and I'll come back if I have a question. Thank you. Thank okay. You. Thank you, Mr. McTaggart. Ms. De La, uh, actually, Mr. Sultani, if you have a clarification. Yeah, uh, okay. We can go Okay, Ms. De La Torre, please go ahead. I was just hoping to get an answer to how this will, um, um, I guess, um, affect the agency and the AG, because we have a second enforcer, and I, I'm not sure what are the logistics of that if we were to make a change in the rules. I'll go ahead and take that one, since uh, I know Ms. Kim also works for the Attorney General's office. Um, in terms of drafting, I mean, I think what um, I know I discussed previously with staff uh, is the possibility of language that would be specific to our agency and our agency's process as a, as, um, as a regulator and sort of our, our, would be then part of our uh, enforcement evaluation process built into the regulation. Okay, so just to repeat back to make sure I understand, we will not be affecting the, um, the enforcement um, process or decision making of the AG through this change. It will just be a change that will be reflected in our own enforcement process. Thank you. Mr. Sultani? Great, thank, thank you. Um, I'll, I'll also flag that, um, uh, echo Mr. Laird's comments, um, but kind of coming from the enforcement background, having worked on these matters, I thought it would just be helpful for the board uh, to know, you know, in response to Mr. Lay's comments, there's no, you know, the the month after a, uh, you know, reg to bring in an enforcement action. Usually enforcement actions take months, if not longer, you know, at FTC. Um, you can look at their average time. It's usually at least a year, if not two. Uh, so I'll just flag that, um, you know, it, it's uh, in practice, um these things do take take quite a lot of time i have no personal concerns with um the language uh that essentially reflects what's in 19945 already uh so i'm comfortable with that but i do just think it's it's uh good for the board to realize that um enforcement matters do take time thank you mr sultani do we have additional comments on this Yes, Ms. Delatory. I, I have a question that is related to this. So it seems to me from the conversation we are having that regardless of whether there is a change to be made to the rules, there is just a shared awareness within the board as to the um, limited time that some of the um, organizations looking at compliance might have to implement. And I think there is also shared awareness as to the fact that not all of the compliance that needs to be done is subject to this you know, particular um, change. I, I apologize, I'm not making a good job explaining myself. What I'm trying to say, let me backtrack, is that CCPA has been the law for a long time now, right? So if I were to look at an enforcement action that is based on a violation of something that was in CCPA two years ago, to me, there is no need to consider the time of this rulemaking 
because everybody was aware of CCPA and they should have been working on implementing it versus there is a violation that happens next year of something that is new that is in the rules or something that was triggered by CPRA, like um, the uh, uh, space that I was mentioning, the HR space. To me, I will be, if I, and we will all be in the position of voting on an enforcement action when we get there, right? If an enforcement action was brought up uh, for a violation of um, uh, C CPA rules that have to do with HR data and the organization had made a good faith effort, I will find it really difficult to vote in support of that violation um, being upheld. So I'm wondering if this conversation, this shared awareness that we have as the board might be a sufficient um, um, reassurance to the business community because ultimately, regardless of what the rules say, the enforcement action will come to the board and us having this conversation and this awareness should result in them being um, more comfortable. That is not the intent of the board to support enforcement that will not be reasonable. Um, so I, I guess what I'm trying to look into is whether this conversation is enough without necessarily uh, requiring a modification of the laws to provide the, um, the assurances that I think we're all looking to provide. Thank you, Ms. De La Torre. Mr. Thompson and then Mr. McTaggart. A, a couple of thoughts uh, on the discussion as it as it has proceeded. I'm I'm sensitive to and sympathetic to the point that Mr. McTaggart brought up about the duration of this kind of guidance. Um, and and hearing what Ms. Kim said about um, you know the this deference or whatever we're going to call it would apply to future rulemakings um, was not necessarily my intent in when when Mr. Lay brought this up and, and I voiced support for it, I was not contemplating I, I was I was applying that in my own mind to a, a specific set of facts, not something that would exist in perpetuity. Um, so if we could time limit or uh, I mean, and maybe we just need to note this for a future rulemaking that we would then rescind this, uh, this uh, expression in, in, in a future rulemaking package, presuming this, this fact pattern didn't exist there. Um, the point that, that Ms. Delatore brings up, I'm reluctant to speculate on how I might consider voting on an enforcement action without kind of looking into a crystal ball. I prefer the clarity of some limited expression uh, as, as originally proposed, then I, I would think that that would give greater comfort to the regulated um, without putting me or others in a position of, of kind of um, expressing how we might vote on a, on a or consider a hypothetical enforcement action that that makes that makes me uncomfortable. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Um, Mr. McTaggart uh, and then Mr. Lay. Uh, thanks, yeah, I, I, and, and um, while I, I think I appreciate where Ms. Delatore was coming from, I would also echo Mr. Thompson's uh, sentiment. I'm, I'm, I'm very uncomfortable speculating how I would vote uh, in the future on some action that, because I, I feel like we're in a fact at that point. And I, I would just come back to, you know, um, and I was not a part of that earlier discussion that Mr. Lay re referred to. So uh, presumably there's been some talk about this before. I'd be very comfortable if we left it to staff to go back and come back with a suggestion. Cause I do think this is a slightly complicated cause we're trying to say, you know, we already have 199.45. How do we want to kind of restate it, but maybe give a little bit of uh, deference to this particular circumstance we're in here, but it's not for a future thing. And so I, I don't, we can, maybe do it now, but um, uh, I, I would, uh, my personal thing would be to say that to uh, staff, ask them to come back. And um, I, th I think one thing that is clear is all of us are, are it feels like supportive of some kind of um, temporary sort of uh, understanding of the fact that, you know, if, if businesses are trying hard, but it's 
uh, there's limited time, there could be a potential to uh, look at enforcement differently than if a business is just totally ignoring stuff. Thank you, Mr. McTaggart. Mr. Lay? Yeah, and I'll, I'll just note on the timing issue is that, you know, the when a new regulation comes out, right, say a year from now, uh, this, this, I think this concern would still be arising, you know, that, hey, we don't want to enforce immediately after regulation comes out. I think this is just codifying, and I, I've worked adjacent to and, and with many regulatory agencies. You know, regulatory agencies generally don't. They use their discretion. The AG uses its discretion uh, anyways when, when bringing enforcement actions. Uh, I, I just saw this kind of language codifying that, hey, the CPPA is, you know, reasonable agency, you know, we're, we're not going to bring an action. Well, we're, we're going to think about how long you've had to actually comply and change your, your uh, privacy policy, what, you name it, before we bring an action. So this, I, I don't see it as really self-limiting. And in terms of the timing issue, I think this, this type of concern will arise every time regulation comes out. Um, you know, and, and nothing in this regulation that I'm suggesting actually prevents the agency from bringing an enforcement action if it so chooses. Uh, assuming, you know, the, the facts are, are there to, to actually bring the enforcement action. And, and um, so I, I don't necessarily think we need to, to time limit it. I, I mean, if, if the board goes with that, I'm, I'm also okay with that. But I think this kind of concern comes up every time new rules comes out. And this is just codifying a practice that I find pretty common uh, with, with enforcement agencies anyways. And, uh, you know, I will, I will kind of support what everyone else said around, you know, I, I don't want to speculate on how I'll vote. And I think the business community would feel better. Uh, and, and we saw all those comments. Um, and I don't want to go so far as putting in like a hard 12 month, you know, grace period, anything like that. I don't think that's the statutory, it's allowed under the statute, but I think this is kind of pulls a, a good middle ground and um, will provide some of the reassurance that maybe the business community would like uh, and kind of just stating that, you know, the agency still has discretion at the end of the day. Um, and this is just one factor that they consider. Thank you, Mr. Lay. Again, nothing we do can, would or can change the statute, which, which, which states that we, that we have discretion. I view this as providing um, a little bit more information and guidance about our approach um, with regard to that. Um, we could, of course, simply, you know, point to the statute, um, which is that which is there already. Uh, but I do understand the um, concerns um, from the business community um, about not you know, wanting to hear just a little bit more from the agency. So I don't think, and, and as Mr. Lay said, this would not stop us from bringing an enforcement action um, if we so chose. It would help the business community understand that we are taking into account this particular situation. Um, uh, Ms. De La Torre? Um, I would just um, wanted to share that I've... Um, been listening to the comments of everybody. I appreciate them. And after kind of having the time to better understand the proposal, I, I've i come to agree with Mr. Lee. I think that what he's proposing is a good middle ground. And so long as Mrs. Kim is telling us that there is a space to get that done within the rules, it seems comfortable that as the case is our expert um, I, I, I'm very supportive of what uh, Mr. Lee is proposing at this point. Thank you, Ms. Delatore. I am also, I believe Mr. Thompson is, um, Mr. Thompson, could you, could you affirm or, or um, clarify if not? Sorry. I'm printing something, sorry. Oh, um, <laughs> I continue to be supportive of, of the concept, and I think this is sufficiently complicated that having the, the staff draft something, I, I guess I would ask Mr. Soltani and Ms. Kim if they feel like they've got sufficient guidance to include a revision in the, in the draft that is to come out, and I would rely upon 
their expertise in in drafting along the lines of, of the discussion that we've had, but I continue to be supportive of, of the concept as articulated. Okay, thank Did you. That, was that the question? It does. I think so. Um, if if it, if Ms. Ms. Kim um, uh, feels as though she understands guidance. Yes. Those yes, I believe, yes, I believe we have um, enough of an understanding of the board's guidance so that we could carry out the direction today and the um, for the 15 day comment period to include a regulation that reflects the board's um, guidance as to this issue that we can include in a 15 day comment period. Uh, thank you, Ms. Kim. Now, um, Mr. McTaggart, um, you raised some important questions and I wanted to check in with you separately as well. Well, um, you know, I was persuaded by Mr. Lay's com last comment. I, I do think he's he's raising a point about any new regulation. And I think Mr. Sultani kind of brought this up. It's not a gotcha situation. It's like we pass a regulation and then boom, you know, hit someone hard the next day kind of thing. So if there's language that sort of, I don't know, uh, clarifies 199.45, I think it's in the statute and it's just, it's just, basically says we're going to be a reasonable agency, you know, and I think that's kind of what I'd like to see. It's hard for me to uh, exactly say until I see the language, but I but I think we've all given uh, Ms. Kim and Mr. Sultani and the rest of the staff enough direction here. So I, I, I'm comfortable where the dis this discussion is now. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. McTaggart. And um, in that case, I suggest that um, Ms. Kim add that um, to the list um, of, of modifications um, to be to be uh, additional modifications um, to be added to the modified text. Um, Mr. Sultani, was there something that you wanted to clarify? I apologize, I just saw your window. Oh no, I, I uh, my name was invoked, so I just jumped on in case I. Okay, <laughs> all right. Um, thank you, Mr. Sultani. Um, thanks, thanks again, Mr. Lay, for bringing that back to our attention. I'm very glad that we uh, had the opportunity to discuss it um, and to give staff some guidance and direction on that issue. Um, I'd like to go back to where we were in the conversation um, just before we began talking about this um, proposed modification related to um, enforcement um, practice, which was I was, um, Mr. Thompson had requested that the components um, of the of the additional modifications that would be going into the or that we would be voting on and considering um, to go into uh, the 15 day comment period uh, be in writing. And I just wanted to double check with with Mr. Laird um, about uh, that and accomplishing that and if there are any drawbacks, um, legal drawbacks to that. Thank you, Mr. Laird. Um, I, I think it's something we can accommodate, certainly. Um, I think probably the request, uh, unless Ms. Kim, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we would just want a few minutes on staff's time to sort of make sure we've prepared a written version that we can, you know, display on the screen for, for everybody to review. Okay, great. Um, then I think let's plan on that. Um, and with that, um, I would like to take public comment. And I would like to remind everyone that what we are considering are modifications to the text proposed by staff um, that were circulated for the meeting um, in the written document, additional modifications proposed by staff throughout the meeting um, today and yesterday, um, and some guidance from the board provided throughout the meeting today and yesterday. And the decision that we will be taking is whether or not to um, put that modified proposed regulated, regulatory text out for additional public comment of at least 15 days. Um, Mr. Sabo, do we have any public comment? I do not see any hands raised. Okay, well, let's um, give everyone a chance to um, collect their thoughts for a moment. Okay, we do have one public comment from an individual named Miles Link. Miles, if you'd like to make a comment, um, please 
one moment. Okay, so you've been unmuted. Again, you have three minutes. Please proceed when you're ready. Okay, hey, thanks everybody. Um, can you guys hear me okay? Great. Uh, so thank you. I, I listened in yesterday. Um, great discourse. I was, uh, I've got three items. Let's see if I can get through them. Um, 7024D. So that item sounded like a pretty precise list of items that shouldn't be shared, for example. Um, and it makes some imply that um, if it's not on that list, that it then should be shared. And there's some current, there's some concerns about the HR data and which HR data we must share with a requester. So for example, um, performance reviews that weren't intended for the eyes of the employee. So um, any HR complaints such as harassment. And anyways, items like that that we're concerned about having to deliver to the employee, um, we wanted to just make sure that they were explicitly I don't think it was the intention to have to send that information out to the requester, but I wanted to just make sure that there was something that specified that capability not to send that info to the requester. So that's item one. Do you want me to stop there? Or do you want to- uh, No, to please next? go ahead. Okay. Um, so item number two, and this one might, and you can stop me if it's if it's not uh, appropriate for this meeting because it wasn't. I don't remember it being discussed yesterday, or being part of the new changes. But it's around automated decision making, and there's two items that when we brainstormed within ourselves that uh, had that, that basically every company would use. But generally, we don't feel that we met the spirit of like we don't do automated decision making, or that this group didn't. Um, but applicant job filtering systems, so like Indeed or LinkedIn, I think that everyone uses those, but the concern is, is if, if that is lumped under automated decision making, then there's a lot that goes into being able to comply with how our technique for filtering resumes are and then the downstream execution of that. Um, and the other one, um, which was definitely secondary, um, that was the main one, was um, advertising, like targeted advertising. In other words, if, you know, we target someone for, you know, an older individual for an advertisement, do they have, then have the right to ask why that decision was made and um, our logic on our automated decision-making and then to opt out of the automated decision-making. Those are my items. Thank you, Miles Lang. Do we have further public comment? Again, please use Zoom's raise hand feature if you'd like to make a public comment. If you're dialing, dialing in, please press star nine to raise your hand. All right, if there is no further public comment, um, thank you, Mr. Sabo. And then I propose that we take a short break um, to allow staff to put what Ms. Kim had summarized and with the addition of the um, modification related, excuse me, let me back up. I propose that we take a short break to allow staff to put what Ms. Kim had summarized um, uh, into written form for the board and to also include the results of the conversation that we just had um, about uh, enforcement practice um, and, um, and then come back um, and consider that motion. Um, and I thank um, the um, member of the public for the comment. 
uh, and ask um, uh, staff how long would you like us to take a break? I'm gonna, uh, well, Ms. Kim. <laughs> um, perhaps about 10 minutes. Okay, um, shall we make it 15 um, just to be safe? So let's uh, take a break and convene back here at 10.05 a.m. Thanks very much, everyone. Welcome back, everyone. Mr. McTaggart, are you back? All right, let's give Mr. McTaggart a second. Oh, here, here he comes. Oh, wonderful. Welcome back, everyone. Um, uh, thank you, um, staff, for taking the break to put together the list of items um, uh, for a motion in written form so the board can have a look at it. Uh, I think that... Um, the, the best thing to do now will be for me to restate where we are um, and then uh, ask um, ask staff to share the, the written um, form of motion uh, with, with the board. So we have considered and discussed the proposed modifications to the proposed rules um, that were captured in the text for the meeting today. We've considered and discussed proposed modifications that are in addition to the ones captured in writing in the materials for today um, from staff. And we have discussed um, a number of um, uh, suggestions and observations from the board, which resulted also in a set of modifications that the board will be considering giving staff discretion to implement in this um, set of proposed modifications to the proposed text of the regulations and others that um, staff will be taking under consideration and doing further work on to consider for future rulemakings. Ms. Kim um, gave a summary that was specific and included um, all of the different um, provisions um, that staff will be either making modifications, further modifications to, or um, in their discretion, adding modifications uh, following the guidance of the board uh, before the package goes out for the 15-day rulemaking. And um, Mr. Thompson, um, quite reasonably, um, asked if we could um, see that uh, in written form. And so staff have now prepared a version of the motion that has the summary in written form, as I understand that's what staff was doing. And now I'd like to turn it back over to Ms. Kim um, or Mr. Laird, um, whoever is better, um, to, um, to share with us that, that text. Sure, I, I will be uh, sharing my screen now. So give me a moment. Um, I should, there we go. Um, can everyone see the screen? And uh, please do let me know if I should enlarge it because I do have a relatively large monitor. So I wanna make sure that everyone can read uh, the document. And I'll certainly scroll down um, as once I walk through this. Um, would it make sense for me to read through it or is it better if I just let everyone take the moment and let me know when I should. Um, I would find it helpful um, if you if you walk through it. Um, sure. and, um, I, as I was understanding Mr. Thompson's request, um, I, I think it would be useful to, to, to just go over the text so that we can all see it as well. Great. Um, Bullet point one, use the staff's discretion to consider and include the following items if feasible at this time. And that is section 7002, clarifying the language about a consumer's expectations with regard to the example set forth in 7002B. Removal of the word factors, clarifying language within 7002B4 about the straightforwardness and ease of understanding of the disclosure. Clarifying language regarding the consumer. 
with regard to 7,025, clarifying language that opt-out preference signals should apply to pseudonymous profiles, example, consumer profiles associated with the browser or device. Clarifying language that if a business asks and the consumer does not affirm their intent to withdraw from a financial incentive program, the business may ignore the opt-out preference signal. Clarifying language that a business shall still apply an opt-out preference signal to the browser or device or the known consumer if the, cons if the business does not ask the consumer to affirm their intent to withdraw from a financial incentive program. With regard to section 7027 subsection M, inclusion of a reference to civil code section 1798-121A, inclusion of language stating that the use and disclosure of the sensitive personal information shall be reasonably necessary and proportionate to achieve the purposes listed within that regulation, moving the term collect in the preamble to subsection M8. And then with regard to the uh, discussion we had today, a new regulation that states that the agency has discretion to consider the amount of time between the effective date of the statutory or regulatory requirement and possible violations of those requirements, as well as good faith efforts to comply. Finally, there are additional modifications recommended by staff and that I described during the Friday meeting in the following sections, and they are listed below. Is it necessary that I go ahead and read it through the subsections, Mr. Laird? It is not necessary for me. And, and not from my perspective either, but if anybody would like to hear, of course. Okay, Mr. Thompson is shaking his head no, um, and Ms. so is Ms. De La Torre. All right. And Mr. Lay as well. Okay, yes, the board does not need you to read all this, all of the, this list of sections. Could you scroll back oh. up to the top? Actually, sure. so I can, I can. Okay, thank you. All right, are there any questions from the board? This appears to me to be the list of items that we discovered and that Ms. Kim summarized earlier in the meeting. All right, in that case, may I have a motion to direct staff to take all steps necessary to prepare and notice modifications to the text of the proposed regulatory amendments for an additional 15 day comment period. The modification shall re reflect the changes proposed by staff in the written meeting materials, except staff um, shall further modify the text in line with the written motion that Ms. Kim presented um, on October 29th um, during the board meeting um, to the board and that will be made available um, on our website after the meeting. Mr. McTaggart. So moved. Thank you, Mr. McTaggart. May I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mr. Lay. The motion has been made and seconded. Mr. Sabo, would you please conduct the roll call vote? Yes, the motion is to approve the um, motion as presented by staff, moved by member McTaggart and seconded by member Lee. Uh, board member De La Torre. This is a difficult vote for me. On one side, I really want to reflect my support for the staff on all of the good work that they have put together. On the other hand, there is a couple of provisions, specifically um, 7002, that um, I see a space to uh, make stronger. I recognize that we are not voting on the final rules. Um, and I also recognize that as a board, we are making it a priority to um, accelerate this process so that we can finalize it as soon as possible. Um, so with that understanding, my choice right now is to vote in favor of the motion and to continue to engage with the staff to better understand um, 702 and how it can be improved. Okay, De La Torre, yes. Board member Lay. Uh, aye. 
Lay, aye. McTaggart? Aye. McTaggart, aye. Thompson? Aye. Thompson, aye. Urban? Aye. Urban, aye. Five ayes. The motion is adopted. Thank you very much, Mr. Sabo. The motion carries with a vote of five to zero. Uh, Ms. Kim, would you mind um, unsharing your screen so we can see? Thank you very much. Um, uh, so the motion um, carries with a vote of five to zero. I want to, again, but with feeling or extra feeling, um, thank very much the staff for their meticulous, thoughtful work in putting together this proposed package of regulations and the modifications. I want to thank the board for its careful and thoughtful analysis of both the proposed regulatory package and the modifications and the board's thoughtful and sensible um, suggestions um, for further improvements to the text. And I very much and especially want to thank the public for its robust participation in this process all the way up to this point, starting with the initial invitation for comments before we entered the rulemaking process, continuing through the stakeholder and expert sessions um, and providing very robust written comments um, to the proposed regulations during the comment period. I know I found them very helpful. I know staff found them very helpful. I believe the rest of the board did as well. Um, you heard us reference them um, in our conversation um, over the last day um, and, and some. Um, and we look forward to hearing your additional comments on the modifications during the 15-day comment period. Um, thanks everyone for your effort, for your patience, um, and with keeping your uh, attention so focused um, during what has been quite a long meeting. Um, and um, with that, um, we can move to the last item on the agenda, agenda item number four, which is adjournment. May I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. I'll Thank move. you very much, Mr. Lay. May I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. McTaggart. I have a motion and a second to adjourn the meeting. Mr. Sabo, could you please call the vote? Motion is to adjourn the meeting. Board Member De La Torre? Aye. De La Torre, aye. Board Member Lay? Aye. Lay, aye. Board Member McTaggart? Aye. McTaggart, aye. Board Member Thompson? Um, before I vote, I have a, a process question in that there's a member of the public with their hand raised. Oh, gosh. That's, I don't know if we want to uh, give that person the opportunity to comment on something if they if that was their desire. Um, Mr. Lair, there isn't usually public comments on adjournment, right? There typically is not, but I will uh, sure. uh, leave it to the board's discretion. OK, um, well, we can certainly hear um, public comment. OK, so the individual member of the public is Lane Williams. I will unmute you now. You have three minutes to make your comments. Please go ahead whenever you're ready. Hi, I am just, hello, can you hear me? We can now, please continue. I was just wondering if the board will meet again on November, um, the, the next scheduled board meeting, um, considering the, the motion to um, adopt the rules. Um, I believe um, uh, the question was, uh, if we would be meeting on the next um, meeting that we've noticed, November 4th, um, to adopt the regulations. Um, Generally, um, we listen to public comments and cannot answer. Um, this is a specific um, process question, so I feel comfortable saying um, that um, there is currently a meeting noticed um, on November 4th. Um, as I mentioned at the top of this meeting, which was yesterday, so you may not have heard it, um, that meeting is a placeholder. We will use it if we need to. We won't use it um, if we do not need to use it. Um, and then in terms of the uh, final adoption of the rules, what we've uh, voted today is to go forward with the 15-day comment. 
Um, so the 15 day comment period cannot be um, completed by November 4th. So that is not something, we will not be adopting final rules on November 4th. Does that help? Yes, thank you. Sure, you're very welcome. Um, Mr. Lair, should we start the vote over or um, uh, should we go ahead with Mr. Thompson? I think we can continue with just Mr. Thompson. All right. Uh, on adjournment, aye. Thompson, aye. Chair Urban? Aye. Urban, aye. Uh, with five votes in favor of adjournment and no votes opposed, the motion to adjourn is adopted. Thank you. The motion to adjourn carries. Again, thank you very much for your um, uh, careful and thoughtful efforts um, over the course of the last day and a bit, and also over the course of the rulemaking process though, thus far. And this meeting of the California Privacy Protection Agency Board is adjourned.